Well, I've had a I've had an insane two weeks here, uh, starting kind of mid June. June tenth, actually, I was gone for uh, five days up in Michigan for a, a, a conference uh, put on by the Acton Institute, which is really a, a fantastic program, but. Uh, uh, something that uh, I think the, the, the church needs to do more of is give some careful thinking to issues uh, of, of the free market and uh, capitalism and those kinds of things. But then came back from that, was home for actually the first time in, I think it was five years, the first time home uh, on Father's Day, because I'm usually out in Nebraska and uh, doing a worldview camp that actually got moved to July this year. So I actually got to spend my first Father's Day with uh, with the family in uh, quite a few years, and then had about a day home, then took off and went to Utah and uh, traveled up there with uh, a a group of college students to do some ministry in Utah with, uh, with Mormons. And, uh, and that was, uh, I think, the 16th through the 20th, and then got back Friday morning of the 20th, and then drove down to San Diego for a camp. Just drove up this afternoon uh, from that camp. So I've, it's been an insane two weeks. But, uh, you know, I wanted to, to talk a little bit about uh, the, the ministry that we're doing in Utah. Uh, we go up there, and we, we, we create opportunities for uh, the students that we work with to engage Mormons. And so we were, I was up there, I think, with them for five days, and then they, that group stayed there an additional two days. We were actually in, um, I think, kind of central Utah in, in the city of Manti, and every year, in the, at the end of June, there are two weeks where the uh, LDS Church puts on uh, a big pageant. It's called the uh, uh, Manti Miracle Pageant where it's kind of a recreation of the events of the Book of Mormon, and it's kind of this festival atmosphere, and there's vendors, and there's, uh, there are thousands of Mormons who travel to this event every year. And uh, so it's, a, it's a, a really a great opportunity to, uh, to talk to Mormons. And, it, and we, you know, we don't have an explicit ministry to Mormons here at STR, but, but one thing I found is that in ministry to Mormons, what it forces uh, Christians to do is to learn good theology. And so, of course, if you're going to, to talk to Mormons, you're going you're gonna to address essential issues like the nature of God, or you're going to uh, look at um, salvation and uh, issues of soteriology. And so, so this forces Christians to get clear on the Orthodox views in order to be able to talk intelligently and reasonably and biblically uh, to Mormons. Um, and so now, but what what happens in, in many conversations with Mormons is that you've got you may get in a discussion and you may discuss some of the biblical texts and uh, you know a Mormon may may stand with you and, and talk for half an hour forty five minutes an hour uh, and, and talk with you about these things. But at some point in the conversation, they will typically make a particular kind of move and they will bear their testimony. Um, and, uh, and, and, and this is how it goes. They essentially say, well, I, you know, I've read the Book of Mormon, I've read it all the way through, and I prayed, and I asked God to confirm this for me, and, and He did, and I, I, I know that it's true based upon this testimony. And so really you're getting into, I mean, this is kind of the central piece to Mormon epistemology. Uh, to know the truth of the Book of Mormon, they make this appeal to a testimony. In fact, uh, last summer, when I was doing some ministry up there with a group, uh, I remember being on the streets of Salt Lake City. I was in a conversation with uh, with these two young gals, probably in their mid twenties, um, and as we talked for a, a little bit, uh, they were having trouble with dealing with some of the the issues I was bringing up. And one of the girls, very sincerely. Uh, began asked if she could share her, her her testimony with me, and as she did, she began to cry. And 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 right there, you know, after meeting this girl for and talking with her for about thirty minutes, right there on the the streets of Salt Lake City, she began to uh, to cry as she was sharing her testimony and and really sharing this uh, some kind of moving experience that she had, uh, and and. She, essentially said the same thing. She read the Book of Mormon, prayed about it, and she knows that it's true. Now, my response to that, you know, of course I wanted to be sensitive uh, uh, to her sincere confession there, and uh, uh, but I also wanted to kind of raise some problems for that as well. And so I actually I thanked her for sincerity. I, I actually said, thank you for being 
you know, being vulnerable and, 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 and sharing that with me. I appreciate that. And, and I did. Um, I appreciate her, her opening up and, and talking about important things like this. And then I, but then I, I posed a, a question for her. And uh, rather than kind of directly address that, I, I kind of brought in a third party. And I said, I said to this, uh, this girl, I said, now what if you were talking to a, a Buddhist or a Hindu or a Muslim, or even me as a Christian, and you were talking uh, to them, and you shared your testimony, just like you have, and, and what if they shared a very similar kind of testimony? And so the Hindu tells you that he's had some kind of experience that has confirmed the truth of his Hindu beliefs, or the Muslim has prayed to Allah and ha- has gotten confirmation through some kind of religious experience uh, that, that Islam is true. And I just kind of pose this as a problem for it, and so what, what do you do with that? And I think uh, it, what it demonstrates is really the liability of, of a testimony as a means for testing uh, the truth. Now, I don't think that uh, we need to throw out religious experience but uh, in terms of our epistemology, but I, I think there's a, there's a role for it, and it may be kind of a limited role, uh, but this seems to be the, for many Mormons, the th- only thing that would justifies their belief. So it kind of in face, uh, in the face of all the contrary evidence, this is what they'll appeal to. In fact, two of the, uh, the team members um, last week were talking to two teenagers, and, uh, and they were raising some tough questions for them, and so they called over their bishop. And the bishop, essentially, all he offered was this. He, I remember he kept saying, you need to get on your knees, and you need to pray about it, and God will tell you that this is true. 